Characterization and the agenda was to talk about contaminant transport through porous media. And this is where we discussed a lot of things regarding how contaminant transport uh, in porous media is becoming an important issue, what are its applications, different type of <coughs> energy fuel concepts which I had talked about, how to club them together to get a realistic picture, followed by uh, definition of advection that is convection and diffusion it is another mechanism of uh, contaminant transport. And this is where I had talked about the philosophy of uh, conducting the experiments, what is meant by diffusion process and uh, different types of diffusion that is steady state and non steady state. And uh, the interpretation in terms of you know fixed law we call them as fixed law, fixed law number 1 and fixed law number 2. And this is where I had also emphasized that it is very important to determine the coefficient of D or uh, which is the diffusion coefficient which is equivalent to the consolidation degree of uh, what, what do you call it? CV coefficient of consolidation all right. So, this is the coefficient of diffusion or diffusion coefficient. And this is where I have shown you different type of experiments which have been done for fractured rocks and intact rock mass and how to derive the parameter diffusion coefficient. I had also discussed about the unsaturated soils and how contaminant transport takes place in unsaturated soils. And uh, we were discussing about this breakthrough curve which is the normalized concentration with respect to time and the slope of this curve gives you diffusion coefficient. So, whenever you perform diffusion experiments, the basic intention is to get normalized concentration with respect to time and slope of this is going to give you the diffusion coefficient. And one of the applications of diffusion coefficient was that you can determine the porosity of the system very precisely because porosity is a very important parameter in guiding most of the mechanical as well as chemical or electrical or magnetic properties of the geomaterials fine. So, if you want to characterize porous media the best way would be to establish its porosity in the best possible manner and very precisely. And this is what is known as Archie's law. So, if you can train this law you know the value of D you can obtain the porosity by conducting different experiments on different types of geomaterial contaminant systems. Now, we use the word system that means, we have a geomaterial and we have a contaminant and how these two are going to interact is a system which I want to analyze clear. The further interpretation of this uh, information would be uh, we get some relationships if you remember for unsaturated soils we were talking about the impedance analysis. And just to show you what we were discussing in the previous lecture, uh, this was a case where we took a tube, two third of this was filled up with the uncontaminated soil and one third was filled up with contaminated soil. And then you leave this system for attaining equilibration with respect to time. And what we are doing is rather than taking out the samples which is a destructive process, there are two ways I can drill a hole and I can take out a sample and I can analyze it, but then basically you are disturbing the sample. So, rather than doing this in present day practice, uh, what people do is they embed electrodes and they measure impedance along the electrodes and that impedance gives you an indication that how contaminants are migrating from one end to another end and you can do complete modeling, it is a non destructive technique. And these electrodes can also be replaced by the sensors in the real life. So, if you install the sensors in the ground. You can measure the properties at a given moment, at a given point and then you can develop a methodology by which the analysis and synthesis of the results can be done. So, this is a small picture in the laboratory and in the real life you can upscale it. I will show you typical analysis of the results what you get from this type of experimentation. Uh, impedance is a sort of a resistance 
I hope you understand. So, we use the word impedance when we talk about AC current. AC itself is current, so I will not to say AC current, AC itself is a current. So, when you measure resistance of a system, fine, by using AC, whatever resistance you get is impedance. Now, if frequency is tending to 0 less than 10 hertz, it becomes DC and then impedance becomes R resistance. So, I hope you will realize that if you wanted to do real life monitoring of these type of situations and if you install sensors, what you are observing is along the length of the sample, as time changes, what happens to the impedance value. So, the first trend which you are seeing is the impedance is dropping down. That means, the resistance offered by the soil mass is dropping over a period of time. So, if you match or if you superimpose on this the figure which I showed you. So, the sample is lying from this end to this end, this portion is contaminated, this portion is uncontaminated. The moment contaminant migrates from contaminated cell to uncontaminated cell, the resistance drops, it is quite understandable, clear. So, these type of curves are employing the concept that flow of electricity is equivalent to flow of heat which is equivalent to flow of contaminants, which is equivalent to flow of moisture or water or flow of magnetic field also. I hope now this point is clear. So, I have talked about all the energy fields and, and the entire process is taking place in the porous system, clear. So, if you wanted to study contaminant transport, the best way would be to measure the impedance. It could be magnetic impedance, it could be thermal impedance, it could be electrical impedance, it could be chemical impedance also. Are you getting this point? So, this is how you define your own philosophy for doing experimentation, clear. So, coming back to this equation, the resistance or the impedance is inversely proportional to concentration of contaminants is correct. So, more the concentration, lesser the impedance. So, by using this concept, what we have done is we have found out an equivalent of D value that is the diffusion coefficient in the form of electrical diffusivity, clear. And this electrical diffusivity has been used to define the contaminant transport process. So, this is how the profiling is done for number of days, how impedance changes with respect to length and so on. If you are very eager to read about this, please read the papers by Sridip and myself. Uh, and this is the part of Dr. Sridip's work uh, which I was presenting here, it is okay. Any questions? So, this is a very interesting way of showing how diffusion, contaminant diffusion takes place in the porous system over a period of time, clear. And I am sure you can also realize that one of the interpretations of these graphs would be that truly speaking these are breakthrough curves. So, breakthrough curve could be with respect to length, with respect to time also and this axis Z prime is inversely proportional to concentration. So, C T by C naught can be written in the form of Z prime 0 upon Z prime at a given time. So, this is how you do interesting manipulations. Is this part clear? I hope you are getting an idea about how researchers design their own experiments and they analyze things and show to the world that their philosophy is impeccable. This is part clear and this is creativity. This becomes the novelty of the work. So, ultimately this is the form of the equation which I had shown you as a second order fixed law time series. I am sure in consolidation equation also when you solve this equation you take help of time series clear. Where is the time hidden over here? This is the time. C T by C naught is relative concentration at a given point at a given time. Where is the distance hidden over here? X, one dimensional contaminant transport, clear. So, in the linear direction, how C T by C naught is changing with respect to X and T is the solution of the second order differential equation which I showed you 
del c by del t equal to d into del square c by del x square and the same thing what you do in convolution equation you solve the same function. So, if you want to use this equation what is required d clear now d e indicates to effective diffusion coefficient what you get from these type of experiment which have been performed is d which is a free molecular diffusion. So, you can convert the two by multiplying some factors and that becomes d e effective diffusion coefficient. So, for every salt when it is in liquid phase clear there is a relationship by which I can convert free molecular diffusion into effective molecular diffusion. If I know d e value what I have to do I have to substitute the value of x I have to substitute the value of t I know what is ct by c naught clear and that is what I wanted to do. So, remember my statement which I gave that suppose if I dispose some contaminant over here and if I want to find out what is its influence at a distance x comma t in one dimension I can solve this you, you have got the point reverse way of doing this would be this is one of the ways that you conduct experiment get the d value second would be suppose if I keep on measuring c t by c naught by using some sensors or by taking out the samples analyzing them in a chemistry lab and getting the c t value over a period of time x is known the location of the sampling is known over a period of time if I keep on analyzing the samples by withdrawing the samples from the ground I get c t by c naught clear. So, left hand side is known and I can compute d value and I can cross check from my experimental results whether things are matching or not. That means, what I have done is I have validated my experimental methodology and I have made them more universal generalized. So, these are the two ways which normally help environmental geotechnology solving the problems. Is this part clear? fine there is simple mathematics now. So, this is how you define your religion in the field of science and technology some of us will be pure experimentalist clear. So, they will not be back computing anything they will perform experiment they will get d value the other half would be pure mathematical modeling guys. So, by mathematical modeling they will keep on putting the value of d and then they will converge both sides and say well this is the d value for this system are you getting this point. Now, what has been observed is that this d e is a function of volumetric moisture content why because if pores are not filled up with water the contaminant transport is not going to occur because water happens to be the carrier advection when you have free velocities or the moving velocities clear, but if it is a stationary water table even then molecular diffusion may occur from one point to another point and that is the reason when you go into the somebody was asking this question in the previous lecture when you work with very fine grained materials like clays clear where advections are negligible, but diffusions become more prominent why capillary action. That means, the contaminant transport is going to occur through the pores and most of the contaminant is going to migrate through the fluid phase which is present in the pore clear. This also emphasizes why nowadays people are talking about volumetric moisture content theta and not the gravimetric moisture content because in gravimetric moisture content you have already disturbed the sample you brought the sample from the field. So, so entire structure has been lost clear. So, in present day circumstances most of the research is again to measure volumetric moisture content and for that you can use TDR, you can use FDR probes, you can use different type of sensors which are available in the market impedance spectroscopy and so on. Yeah, flow may be in two dimension also here we are considering only one dimension. See the best thing is do not make your life so complicated from t equal to 0 itself life is already very complicated. <laughs> so, first you solve problems in one dimension there is no harm sky is not going to fall 
clear in your mechanics courses which analysis is more important one dimensional two dimensional three dimensional so which situation is more critical three dimensional two dimensional one dimensional or point point loading has infinite stresses remember so if i if i pierce your body with a small pin the maximum damage can be done <laughs> not with the help of a surface or not with the help of a volume you understand so that is the impact of the hurt which you might feel because of a zero dimension body that's why most of the ammunitions are zero dimensional they have tips <laughs> okay let's go ahead fine so don't don't make it so complicated first to learn simple things and i can if i am clever what i'll do I'll, I'll do analysis in x direction, I'll do analysis in the y direction, z direction, assuming them as one dimensional, no problem, clear? Sir, uh, whatever modeling we are doing here, like it will be uh, specific to one, one type of site or one type of contaminant? One type of soil contaminant system, that's why I emphasize the term soil and contaminant. So the moment you change the contaminant, things are going to change, clear? The moment you change the porous media, things are going to change. So normally all this analysis is done for a system under a specific temperature, pressure, chemical, biological, humidity conditions, fine. See there is another term which is hidden over here and nobody asked this question is RD, clear. This we will discuss slightly later. So, truly speaking, RD is a term which talks about any any clues what it could be R for retardation, fate of contaminant, clear. So, RD basically talks about how retardation in the concentration of a chemical species is going to take place when it is going to interact with porous media and we will investigate this quite in detail later on, fine. Unfortunately, what is missing? This is one, one angle of looking at the problem from the contaminant side. What is missing? So now the second angle would be what is happening to the porous system that nobody talks about. And the reason is all these things used to be the monopoly of hydrogeologists. So they have not given due weightage to the geomaterials, porous media. Are you getting the point? So when we, with our advent into this whole analysis, what has happened now? We have started giving more weightage to the porous media, if not the equal weightage as compared to the contaminants also. So this becomes a holistic system. Are you realizing the shortcomings and the loopholes in the existing knowledge which you have to develop further? Fine. X naught LCs are some boundary conditions, okay, for solving this mathematical expression. Is this okay? Shall I go ahead? So let us talk about the second mechanism which is the dispersion. Yesterday somebody used this word dispersion and then I asked you to wait, it is not correct. Dispersion is something totally different. What is dispersion? There is a crowd which has dispersed because of the intervention by police, they use the word, clear? What is the meaning of this? The moment something came, this crowd dispersed, clear? So this is a different mechanism altogether. Now let us see what it is. So until now we have talked about two mechanisms of contaminant transport. One is advection, which is convection, fine? And the second one was diffusion. Now the third one is dispersion. Now dispersion is something similar to diffusion, but then in this case, it is completely thins out, it scatters or spreads into the entire system. So when you are putting pressure per magnet into a water which is stationary, this was a diffusive contaminant transport and the moment you stir it, what has happened? The speed of diffusion has increased, 
for that matter a cup of tea which you take and you put pour some sugar and what do you do? You just wait for sugar to get mixed up, it will take years for you to enjoy a cup of tea. So, what do you do? You immediately stir it, clear? What is stirring? Mechanical in intervention, fine, mechanical agitation. So, when you dispose slurries from the industrial units, I am sure you must have studied in your hydraulics courses. Suppose if I have to discharge sewage into a water body, which is a practice in coastal areas, what do they do? They will lay a pipeline up to few kilometers inside the water body and they will flush out everything. What happens there? It disperses. But then what happens because of tidal action, everything comes back to the city. What you give comes back to you. You understand? So, you have to learn from all these mistakes of the people. So, let us see what happens when we talk about the dispersion process. In dispersion process, you know again the same plug which we are discussing in the previous lecture, this is the concentration of the contaminant and this spreads over, you know look at this, as time increases, as distance increases, this is thinning out. So, concentration is dropping down and it is moving along the x direction. Now, this process is known as a dispersion process. So, what I have shown here is a peculiar city by C naught, which is a normalized concentration with respect to distance. So, initially this is what is known as a step gradient. C T by C naught was 1 within the whole liquid. Within this zone, there is a concentration drop and by the time you reach this point, the concentration has become 0 and then it thins out. So, what happens to the breakthrough curve? It diffuses further down, clear? So, there is a spread of diffusion process, sorry dispersion process and then it thins out. So, concentration is decreasing. Now, it so happens that if you want to understand what is a dispersion phenomena, you have to go into the particulate system of the soil and from here the intricacy starts. So, the geomechanics becomes totally different once you start looking at pore spaces, what is happening inside the pores. So, I am sure this type of figure you must have come across in your fluid dynamics course. You remember a conduit through which water is flowing and if I ask you to draw velocity profile, you can very quickly draw the velocity profile like a parabolic curve, is it not? At the center the velocity is maximum and it is quite minimum or 0 at the interfaces of fluid and the pipe, why? Friction, you are right and then you compute the friction by using Chase's coefficient, Manning's equation, whatever, fine. It is not so easy to do these things in granular materials like soils, why? Why? Irregular surface, one, number two, number three, no, length you know, I can trace it, seepage path. So, the discharge path and the seepage path, ratio of the two is your V s, seepage velocity, so that I can do. Very good. So, diameter of the pores are so small, that is very difficult for you to look into the microscopic view of the particles. So, this is a hypothesis, why dispersion takes place? That means, the velocity profile within the system is not uniform, clear? So, whenever there is a contrast in the sub layers of the system in the seepage velocity, imagine two layers with different velocities. So, there is a relative motion and this relative motion is causing dispersion to occur. You got this point and that is the basic difference between diffusion process and dispersion process. So, diffusion was from liquid phase the ions will like to diffuse in the system as long as the fluid phase is present. Here because of the movement of the molecules of fluid, chances are that there could be a velocity contrast and that velocity contrast is responsible for causing dispersion to occur, fine. So, this is how we idealize closer to these systems, there could be a slow velocity, there could be a fast velocity of fluid and hence this velocity contrast is going to create a sort of a dispersion 
process. Disparity in the path length, there could be a short path, there could be a long path in the porous media, clear. So, if you have this type of system, seepage velocities inside the paths are going to be different and hence there could be a intermixing of the fluid which is dispersion. The third thing would be this type of a situation may occur where you have velocity gradient which are so critical that they causes the dispersion of contaminant to take place. Fortunately, you must have realized in our systems like compacted clays, soils, what is going to happen? The velocity, seepage velocity itself is extremely low, clear? So, we are lucky that we need not to deal with dispersion much, clear? So, normally we ignore dispersion because of very low Reynolds numbers and very low seepage velocities. 10 power minus 11 meter per second is the hydraulic conductivity for compacted clays, fine. So, we can very easily assume that in systems like clays, dispersion is not going to occur. Advection is also not going to occur. So, what is going to occur? Diffusion. Is this clear? Let us understand this process again. Suppose if I consider three paths A, B and C, what you realize here is because of the torticity, this is nothing but the torticity of the seepage path. How do you define torticity factor? The square of that, L C upon L, the square of that is the torticity factor. Did you ever look Kozni, uh, sorry, Kozni Karman equation? Do you remember that? Write it on your papers and try to analyze what is known there and what is unknown. 1 by kk mu by gamma w times e q by 1 plus e times beta. Arjun, what you have written? You do not remember, no problem. Next. Okay, next. Ankur. Proportional to e q upon 1 plus e. Ah, good. Proportional. Fine. So, proportionality has created a lot of ambiguity. Why? You never know what is this proportional sign. K is equal to 1 upon S is square plus root of it is a constant into gamma w upon mu e q, e q upon 1 plus. You have goofed up it completely, sorry. This is not <laughs> Kozni Karman equation. Yes. Anjusha. Say it again, please. Kozni Karman relationship, relationship is valid for fine grain material or coarse grain materials? This is where the catch is. Yes, Danisha. I hope you got my hints. Yes. Uh, proportional to EQ by 1 plus E into uh, 1 by specific surface square. Very nice. In Good. Gamma by mu. No gamma and all. Inversely proportional to mu. Inversely proportional to? Uh, viscosity. You are confused. So, go and check it out today, all of you please, from the books, clear? What is the kozni karman relationship? There are a lot of terms. So, yeah, some of you are close to Reza and Danisha, you are very close to this. So, suppose if I say k is proportional to e cube upon 1 plus e, e square upon 1 plus e, e upon 1 plus e, all those models are there, clear? Now, this proportionality sign as we were talking about is something very interesting. So, this is basically 1 upon c into 1 upon s into 1 upon tau. All these factors are unknown. You agree? What is c? Normally, s is shear factor. C is? Angularity of the particles, shape is 1, angularity is 1, tau is torticity factor. Now, you never bothered when you are undergraduate student that how to obtain these terms. You agree? Avik, have you followed this? Now, the question is how would you get this term C as tau? Tau, he said, is 
L c upon L square or whatever, L effective upon length of the sample square. What about C and S? Shape factor and and angularity, clear? How would you obtain these terms? Now you have to do microscopic examination. SEM will not give you much information, unfortunately, because please remember SEM. I don't know. We were discussing one of the days that you remember SEM is quantitative or qualitative? It is a visual. It's a it's a visual proof of something. Clear? So to quant is qualitative. To quantify things from SEM is an extremely difficult task, clear? So what people do is they go for mercury integer porosimetry which you had seen in the laboratory, okay? So when you want to idealize these particle agglomeration for a porous media, then MIP becomes very useful. There is no other way except for including something which is non-wetting fluid, non-reacting fluid, having very low surface tension, understands what pressure is being applied. So intelligent a fluid that you apply a pressure, what happens? The smallest drop gets formed which is spherical in nature because of extremely low surface tension and then you can include it into the finest pores of the system or I should be using some gases, helium gas pycnometer, you must have seen in the laboratory. So what helium gas is doing? The molecular size is extremely small, inert gas, helium, fine and this is what is being included into the pores. So some time back I said when you obtain the porosity by dipping something in water or soaking a sample in water for 72 hours, your calculations are not going to be correct. Why? Because I told you that day that the water molecules are bigger than the finest possible size in the size of the pores which is present in the system, understand? So you are not going to get the correct permeability, sorry porosities, I am sorry, not permeability, porosity. Rather if I change the fluid, what is going to happen? All these finer, finest possible pores are going to be filled up with the gases, inert gases, they should not react with the porous media, helium, nitrogen, air but air will oxidize things by the way, please remember. If you are dealing with ox very high organic matter in the soil mass and if you pass air, chances are the whole thing may get oxidized and decompose. So we do not do that, we normally use helium gas or nitrogen gas, clear? So now I have given you an idea about how to capture the microscopic arrangement of grains within the system. Now this is a big deviation from conventional geomechanics because there you never bothered about, you know, integrity of the system itself. You never bothered about the grain structure though you have studied it, but you never questioned how to capture it, how to quantify it. Are you getting these points? So once you enter into the porous media, particularly at the particulate level, all these questions come in mind, how to quantify this and this is where MIP becomes very useful. Things are getting tougher. Things are becoming tougher. I thought that things are becoming simplified now. <laughs> A simplification, like simplified in the sense like uh, or the most of the problems can be solved if you are knowing all these things. <laughs> you can always say that 10, 15 minutes back I told him why to make life so, com so <laughs> complicated. Now I am making my life complicated. <laughs> by entering into the pore system, clear? Yes, it is complicated but it is very enjoyable. Yes, Neeraj, what do you have to say? I know these are, right now these things are Greek and Latin for you, but then a day comes when you master all these things and you say that I know everything about it and I create questions which nobody can answer. There's the art of mastering something. Yes, please. I understand that you need to like this chance for questioning everything. So if I do this, then I can question question why not that. Even if you don't even look at the other question, why not? 
correct. So, see this is how you enter into the hardcore R and D. So, from I think this is last one and a half class, I am trying to take all of you into a very different domain. It is a flight to a very different domain. But it is worth enjoying because when you are doing MIP, I think when it was being demonstrated to you, you never realize what you can do with MIP, I am very sure it takes time to understand things, clear. Now, at industry level, we have so many applications. Suppose if I give you a sample of steel and if I ask you what is the pore structure of steel, you will say it is impervious, it is not correct. It has porosities. You map the porosities and then you will realize that where I can use this particular creation in what type of applications. Fine. Second thing is if I have to smelt it, ore, how much energy is required? For that matter, porosity of the coal itself, I have to find out first. What is its calorific value? So, you have a lot of application industry where MIP is used in synthesis and creation of different type of industrial products. Most of the raisins which you produce, most of the I do not know, you just check one company, DuPont, D U P O N T, and see what do they do. They're starting from your mattresses to the sleeping bags to pillows to comforters to sub zero degree jackets, everything they make, DuPont, you know. So, there is the application of all these things, post structure analysis which I have talked about in fabrics. The more and more air you can trap into the pores, you feel weatherproof. So, go to the Antarctica minus 40 degree outside in Srinagar, Kashmir and all these areas. What is going to happen? The more and more air I can pack into the pores, which will not come out, very thin sheet, even then it will be extremely warm during winters. So, you can use these informations. So, you no wonder somebody may send you a sample of a cloth and say find out the porosity of this cloth. So, this becomes poro mechanics. So, most of the geotechnical engineers are becoming poro mechanics guys. There is a big group on internationally which is known as poro mechanics uh, researchers. Type it on net. Hmm? Poro mechanics, por, P O R O, poro mechanics. And this is a very active group. You will find maybe thousands of people, you know, a part of this activity. So, what do they do? All sorts of pore system analysis they do. So, yesterday you are reading a paper where they are talking about the porosity of skin. You remember? Who is going to use this information? Dermatologists. What for? You know the answers. You can treat your skin in case there is some problem. So, unless I understand what is the pore structure of my skin, I cannot treat you. Tissue cultures, different type of cancer studies where you take out the cells from the body and you wanted to study what has happened, what, what wrong went with the system, clear. So, attack of any chemical on the tissues which is making it more perforated can be established with the help of enhanced porosity of the body cells, body tissues. And you can establish that at what rate something is growing in your body, biopsies. Tremendous application. So, because of this equipment in our laboratory, we were dealing with all of them, all sorts of people, metallurgists to physicists to chemists to biologists to doctors to medical professionals to steel making industries, resin manufacturers, pharmaceuticals and so on. It is a very interesting subject. But this like a player's jerseys also whenever they change the jerseys not only their design is changing actually this type of applications are also there in their jerseys. Correct. Making them comfortable. That is right. So, if they are playing in uh, Dubai sun the whole day and night, there must be some special thing which they must be doing. You and me cannot play. After half an hour, what will happen? We will sweat so much that we will faint. Think about the false bowlers who are bowling at least 10 overs. 
imagine in this climate it's not easy you, you can't even walk in this climate in bombay climate right now 95% humidity 85% humidity 80% humidity clear so these are the body comforts which you can create by understanding the force of the system fine good you liking it now so think of a chocolate or a toffee or a mouth freshener where the porosity is extremely low what will happen you keep on chewing it you'll not get any fun out of it it will not dissolve in saliva <laughs> then uh, is a practical example i am citing okay, how do the candies are made they have to be made at a certain porosity why the moment you put in your mouth it melts melts means something goes inside the saliva goes into the matrix of these things and dissolves it immediately look he is so happy now <laughs> i have given him the whole concept of you know how to create good candies these are the applications are you realizing this is r and d science and technology which is not binding you to only deal with soils and minerals well you have so many applications sky is the limit solar cells whatever you are designing i am sure you must have seen have you ever seen a solar cell go to the top of your hostel and see how do they look like they have porosity why if they if they reflect the entire sunlight what's going to happen there is no fun clear so what they have to do they have to be rugged non smooth structures clear so you are creating a fabric or a texture so that the sun rays won't get reflected are you getting this point so again you are modulating the pore structure so let's move ahead so this is the porous media and you know this is a discretized system of the particles of different shapes different angularities different sphericity different <coughs> morphology i am talking about the physics of the material right now please remember we use these terms when we are talking about the morphological examination of the grains you agree and there i had given you some logic that if they are angular shear strength will be more interlocking will be more but crushing strength will be less and so on you agree so when you want to answer these type of questions you have to do microscopic examination so here we are because we are talking about the distribution of the fluid phase and how fluid phase takes along with it dispersion of contaminants so this is the idealized situation in real life this is what is happening branching out of the fluids through the pores and uh, you know this is where the particle contaminant interaction starts so i have already discussed these things uh, the only thing is that you can use this equation if you know the seepage velocity there is something known as dynamic dispersivity those of you who might be working in this area of designing gcls or ccls compacted clay liners or geocomposite clay liners geotextile clay liners normally they call them i'm sure you must have come across this term lateral dispersivity and perpendicular dispersivity clear so suppose if i use a geotextile for that matter anything which is absorbing any any fluid so suppose if the fluid is being dropped like this there is transmissivity in the along the direction of flow and there is a transmissivity perpendicular to the direction of flow but parallel to the surface so unless you have these two things your sorbing systems are not going to be good so when you are designing gcls you have to take care of dispersivity of the fluid in both the directions now i can design a system in such a manner that i can suppress one of the two are you getting the point so if i am designing a barrier i would like maximum flow to come out of it not getting dispersed in the lateral direction but i am designing suppose a seepage control system what i'll do the in plane dispersivity will be more perpendicular to the plane permissivity permissivity would be extremely less so that depends upon the pore structures are you realizing this point 
So, now you can create composites where some leakage which is taking place would not penetrate through the entire system, it will disperse into it and I can collect it from the back ends by designing good liner system, fine. So, <clears throat> this is how we obtain the dispersion coefficient and sorry AL and the guideline given for AL is uh, there is some empirical relationship. L is the total distance which you are interested in multiplied by some coefficient and to the power 1.46. These are very empirical relationships but sometimes people use them. The guys who are into mostly engineering geology and those who are mostly into tracer analysis, fine. Those who try to find out where what type of systems are hidden in the ground, they use these type of models much more, okay. The last one is hydrodynamic dispersion which I think I have given, I have given you hints. Uh, you put some sugar or salt in a water, in a cup and then stir it. So, the moment you provide external energy, the hydrodynamic dispersion takes place and the system attains uniform concentration quickly. Mostly this type of things are not done in uh, geomechanics because you cannot stir anything there unless you are designing slurries. So, I have to take my words back that cannot be done in geomechanics because geomechanics guys are also designing slurries. There is a fluid phase of the minerals and the soils, clear. So, for all practical purposes when you deal with the porous media, hydrodynamic dispersion is ruled out. Now, this is the equation which is normally used for finding out the hydrodynamic dispersion. I hope this term is clear from the dispersion process which is velocity induced plus d i. Now, d i is the coefficient which is the free molecular diffusion of the system of a contaminant in the fluid phase. And uh, again you have these type of equations which have to be solved. I showed you something of this type just uh, some time back that C t is C, C t by C naught is error function of the entire term. These are different form of expressing the equation which is known as contaminant transport equation in one dimension. You can obtain D L parameter, D L is the coefficient of hydrodynamic dispersion, seepage velocity you can obtain, L is the distance, T is the time, you substitute these values, you get C T by C naught with respect to time. Fortunately, hydrodynamic dispersion and dispersion normally we do not take into account when we deal with porous media. So, now let us generalize the equation which normally we use for contaminant transport in porous systems. Have you ever come across this equation? Few terms I am sure must be very well you know known to you. Suppose if I remove this term and this term, this equation is very well known to you. C gets replaced by U, C gets replaced by theta temperature, C gets replaced by charge dQ by dt, rate of change of charge, electric charge from a system. This will become electrical diffusivity, Di becoming alpha thermal diffusivity, clear, Di becoming Cv fluid phase diffusivity consolidation, clear. So, this is known. Have you come across this term? Del C by del Z. What is del U by del Z? What is V s? Seepage velocity, clear. V into C is mass flux. V 1 into C 1 equal to V 2 into C t, C 2, clear. So, the moment you multiply seepage velocity Vs with del C by del X or del Z, 
its rate of change of mass flux in the z direction. That is it, clear? So, again this is a one dimensional equation which shows how concentration of any flux is changing with respect to time along the direction of flow. Is this part clear? So, this is diffusive contaminant transport, this is advection term, is this okay? Seepage velocity multiplied by rate of change of concentration, this is advection term. So, this becomes advective diffusive contaminant transport. Now, this term we have to analyze because this is something new which you have not come across until now. So, how do you read it? Rate of change of concentration with respect to time is a function of diffusive contaminant transport, advective contaminant transport and I am sure you are seeing all of them are negative because concentration is dropping down because of all these mechanisms. Rho dry is the density of the porous media, porosity is porosity, KD is distribution coefficient. You remember I was talking about distribution coefficient, how partitioning is taking place. That means, if I pour some liquid having some contaminants, what soil does, porous media does, it will sorb something and then let the fluid flow, flow occur. So, there is a sort of a partitioning which has occurred from the liquid phase, something has got adhered onto the surface, rest of the thing remain in the fluid phase. Now, this is a very big challenge to obtain. Most of the governments of the countries spend millions and billions of rupees, you know what for? What for? Any guess? To get the KD parameter. Why? From equation we have gone to the strength of the nation, you know, muscle power of the nation. That is the beauty of these equations, you know, these are not only mathematical terms, never mistake them to be only mathematical terms. They speak a lot. So, KD is something which is going to make your atomic research program of the country more successful. Why? Yes, this indicates where I should be dumping my atomic waste. So, what common sense says? KD should be more or K should be less? It is a divided house. So, that is what happens in parliaments also. So, you said more, justify your answer. Very good. So, he wins the game. So, you are not correct. Fine. So, KD should be very high. What is the meaning of this? All the soil particles should be like magnets. They will not let anything go out of them. Clear? So, enhance their surface area so much enhance their cation exchange capacity so much, they become perfect sorbents. You understand? So, either nature does this for you, it has created few pockets where the activity of the minerals is so high that whatever is dropped in them will never come out of them in the form of chemical concentration, clear nuclear concentration. If nature has not done this, what you have to do? You have to create something like this. So, synthetic minerals which I have been talking about have to be created where you want to achieve very high KD value and very high KD value will also indicate extremely high cation exchange capacity, extremely high species surface area. Are you getting this point? So, most of these atomic agencies of the world have a mandate what do they do? They keep on collecting samples from different, different locations. They try to select the right mineral which will give you the best possible KD value for a given species of radionuclide. Are you getting this point? Keep on doing it. So, if you see now the papers which are published by Dr. Pankaj Patak, she has three wonderful papers in ASC, read those papers to understand how KD can be determined. So, 
any one of you who is trying to understand interaction of any two substances, particularly in the liquid phase, fluid phase and a solid phase, he has to quantify everything in the KD form. AMD reacting with a solid system, neutralization taking place is a beautiful example of obtain the KD value and establish whether your silicates, eliminates are reacting with the chemicals or not. If KD tends to 0, that means you are interacting with dead woods, they are not going to do anything for you, it is a pure quartz. Now, suppose somebody asks you convert this quartz into the best possible zeolites. Are you getting this point? That becomes a big challenge. So, if you want to study all these things, read the book, book which has been written by myself and Dr. Jha on zeolites, on Dr. B. Jha, Bhagwanji Jha, and his thesis and his papers you should read and the work done by Nevin Koshi. These are the guys who have done lot of things related to synthesis of hyperactive minerals in laboratory. One message you must have got very clearly that these equations challenge you a lot. How many stories can be created out of it? Otherwise simply what is the tendency to mug up the equation and write in the exam without following what is the implication of these equations. Okay, so let us analyze it further. So truly speaking the rate of change of concentration in a porous system would depend upon diffusive contaminant transport, advective contaminant transport and what about this sorption. So the moment KD term comes is a sorption or distribution coefficient, clear or partitioning coefficient. Now suppose if I take this term on the right hand side, what is going to happen? This will become del C by del T equal to, del C by del T equal to, sorry, del C by del T bracket 1 plus KD by porosity into, that is it. So 1 plus KD into rho by porosity. 1 plus this term is known as retardation coefficient, attenuation coefficient. Did you get this point? So, if I write this equation as del C by del T 1 plus rho into KD upon porosity, this will be equal to diffusive contaminant transport minus advective contaminant transport, clear? So, 1 plus rho into KD by mu rho is R, retardation coefficient. So, retardation coefficient is the property of a contaminant porous media system. And the moment you know KD, the porous media attributes are known, you get the value of R and you can see how much retardation in contaminant transport is going to occur. Is this part clear? What are the principal unknowns here in this equation? Yes, you are right. Number one, coefficients. All coefficients are known. So, why do you perform tests in the lab? To get the coefficient. Coefficient of hydraulic conductivity, how did you get? By falling head test or constant head test, clear? So, you measure the discharge of water for a given time, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes. You average out, you get the value of a small k. Agreed? Fall in height of the water column. You have that equation A by capital A or whatever into log of H1 by H2 and all this, tick. Okay. How about DI? We have already discussed what type of experiments we will be doing. Vs from discharge, if you know the porosity, you can get the Vs, clear? And you can be happy. How about the porosity? MIP. So, take the sample, put it in MIP, get the M porosity value. Density you can measure easily, helium gas pycnometer you can use. The biggest culprit is KD, it is an intricate thing. So, we will have to discuss this in quite details. And that will discuss about the sorption 
desorption mechanisms. Long back I said please keep it at, write it down at the back of your notebook and we will discuss later about sorption desorption mechanisms in the geomaterials. So now that stage is coming first, is this part clear? So now we have different professionals who are looking at this equation in different manners. So some of them are field monitoring guys, some of them are field instrumentalists, clear they, they, they perform experiments in such a manner that they will obtain everything under field conditions. There are some guys who will take the samples to the laboratory, perform tests by designing all sorts of experiments and they will get the parameters. Then there are some people who will do numerical modeling of everything. So we have created several expertise out of this whole thing. It is a very hot topic I hope you understand and of strategic importance and societal importance. How to protect your aquifers against contamination, clear? Number one, how to protect your wealth? Which wealth you are talking about? Sorry? Very nice, good. So suppose it is there today, tomorrow what may happen? <laughs> you cannot lock it in a key and lock, you understand? The whole thing may get drifted to some other continent, who knows? So today you are oil rich. Tomorrow when you start drilling oil, you will not find even a drop of oil, why? It has migrated. Check it on net, it is a beautiful concept on which lot of people are working, how to stop intercontinental drift of hydrocarbons and water resources. Are you getting these ideas? Intercontinental drifts of hydrocarbons and water resources. See whatever is on the surface can be controlled, you agree, but whatever is beneath, you, you have no control on that. Very intricate problem, I hope you are realizing the intricacies of the problem, understand? So you have to be a player on an international map, you have to coordinate with all of these guys, agencies, then you have to do remote sensing, what not and then you cannot say that I am working only in this area like this, clear? Yes. Uh, regarding this advection, say it again. Uh, regarding the advection and diffusion equation. Say, say it again. Advection. Advection. Mm. Yes. And diffusion equation. Correct. So the concentration we are uh, talking about is of a specific species. I yes. It is a specific species. So then there is a chance that that species concentration may increase. Yes. So like again I said please do not complicate the whole thing. <laughs> Let it be as simple as possible. Yeah, yeah, it is all possible. So unfortunately all those components you keep on adding, you have enough time in life and solve the problems, clear? So you can modulate this equation the way you want, put your parameters and say this has become nearest equation. Why not? That is what people do. They modify things and they, they claim for it, that is the patenting of IPR. That is what you have to do. You should not be very happy with whatever is being discussed with you. This is a past knowledge. You have to create new knowledge. So there are a lot of terms which are not appearing here. B is not appearing here absolutely. Radioactivity is getting reflected in the form of KD because each ionic species in its active and inactive form will be having a different KD parameter, clear? that I can reflect here. Now if you really want to make it very complicated, let us bring the time effects into it. Porosity as a function of time, density as a function of time. So porous media is changing always, why? Because of the eating up process of contaminants, clear? Heat, precipitation, dissolution of salts which are present in the porous media, flushing out of bacteria. Clear? Agglomeration of bacteria. And if you want to make it much more complicated, what should I do? Tell me now, give me an idea. All this is under fluid phase 1. Clear? I will make it a coupled phenomena by saying there is a partial water fluid partial liquid phase, partial fluid phase, hydrocarbons. 
you are talking about clear. Now what is going to happen? Your V S itself will be having U A and U W. U A is pore air pressure and U W is pore water pressure. So right now you ignored all these things. You said seepage velocity is of saturated porous media which is not going to happen in nature clear. So change V S. Now D I is going to change because D I was also under saturated systems fluid phase it is not going to happen in nature. So what is going to happen is partially saturated conduct experiments where you can get DIs under partial saturation of the porous systems. One life is less. I hope you understand and experimenting is extremely expensive and time consuming because you start making setups. <coughs> takes a lot of time, but it is a good passion and a good hobby, alright. So, I will move ahead now. Is this part clear? Have you understood the whole philosophy? Any questions? Yeah, the, those of you who might be working in MSW, beautiful example. So, you have all sorts of things, leachates are there, gaseous phase is there, gases are there, leachates are there, you know, solids are also there, multi phase interaction of all the phases, clear, decomposition also going on. Nothing is constant in this term, in this equation, nothing is constant. Di changes as a function of time, Vs changes as a function of time, porosity changes with respect to time, Kd also changes with respect to time, density also changes with respect to time. That is the most real life situation. Now what you should do is adopt a landfill, do experiments there, keep on doing mathematical modeling and see which mathematical model predicts the best and that credit you can earn. Factors deciding type of contaminant mechanism, grain size as I said fine grain materials will not allow advection much but they will be promoting more of diffusion, clear. Density, seepage velocity, concentration of chemicals, viscosity, hydraulic conductivity and then this is as far as the porous media is concerned, clear. The second aspect is contaminants. So, we have normally two types of situations, contaminants and soil conditions. Active, passive, soil conditions would be saturated, unsaturated, fine. So, this becomes a multi uh, component situation. Mechanism, I will show you how you can modulate the mechanisms also from this whole work. Sir, I was looking at the these points, anything is left. So many parameters, clear? Hmm. Yes, so it is very difficult to deal with the parameters. If you want to learn how to model your experiments and how to control several parameters in your experiment, there is a very good method which is given by Dr. Pankaj Pathak in her paper. So please read those papers where she has talked about the Taguchi method, multivariate problems, how to deal with them how to design your experiments so that in less attempts you can get precise results, Taguchi method. Read this method, this is useful in all walks of engineering and technology, not related to only geotechnical engineering. And she has one of the papers where she has optimized the parameters which should be utilized for studying contaminant transport through soils. Well, so I am sure you must have done this type of analysis. What do you call this analysis? Sorry, dimensional analysis, technical name, which theorem is this? Pi Buckingham theorem, yes, this is also known as multivariate analysis. See, all of them are variate variables. So, when you say multivariate analysis, I will say C is a function of x, y, z into this, 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 and then I will go for partial differentiation and I will see which sensitivity analysis, which parameter influences the results most, clear? So, I will say del f upon f equal to a del x upon del x, del x upon x plus b del y upon y and so on, clear. And then I will see which parameter is giving more sensitivity to my results. So, these are the parameters which are involved in the con contaminant transport mechanisms. I am hope sure you must have come across C is the concentration, mu is the dynamic viscosity, d is the diffusion coefficient, s is the mass of the contaminant getting sorbed on the system 
absorption process. We will discuss about this. Interstitial flow velocity is seepage velocity, Tf is the surface tension, density of the fluid, acceleration due to gravity, L is the characteristic microscopic length. You know what it is? How would you obtain characteristic microscopic length? Rho dv my mu, what is d? d is the diameter of the pipe for the fluid flow in the conduits. Now, if I say d10, this becomes characteristic diameter in the porous media. So, d10 could be a characteristic microscopic length also, d10, d50, d30 and so on, fine. Then this is the characteristic microscopic length depending upon the particle size, T is the time and soil properties is a very big black box. How would you basically characterize soils based on their properties? So, this is a very unfortunate thing we have not still come out with a proper guideline to define soil properties. So, let us start by saying reactive non-reactive soils that helps you. activity, surface area, cation exchange capacity, all that series will come here. So, soil property and the mineralogy which you have not talked about. So, if you are doing a very good R and D work, what you should be doing? Soil properties will constitute or constitute of each and every mineral which is present in the soil and its percentage and then do this modeling for each and every phase of the mineral which is present in the soil. Life is going to be more complicated, but this is where the R and D is right now. So, what you have to do? You have to do the best possible XRD analysis. From there you have to get mineralogical phases, separate out all the minerals from the soil. Each phase of the mineral you have to compute CEC, SSA and so on, discretize the whole material and then go ahead with the modeling. It is not easy, it is extremely difficult task, extremely difficult I am using the word clear yeah. because it requires lot of patience and perseverance, okay. This is just a glimpse of the things, I mean you should realize that what it, what is in the background of the entire thing. In centrifuge modeling you must have come across all these numbers I am sure. Is it not? Some of the numbers you can recognize very easily, some of the numbers are new for you. So, we do lot of contaminant transport mechanism, concentration number, advection number, diffusion number, capillary number, then we talk about adsorption number, we call about, uh, talk about dynamic effect number. These are similitudes, they have to be, no, 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 they have to be equilibrated in your model and prototype, clear? Now, what happens is there could be some numbers which might not get simulated properly. Are you aware of this? So, when you do centrifuge modeling, you have to be very careful about it. This work was done by Dr. Ashok Gupta. In centrifuge, we have shown that whether Reynolds number can be maintained or not. Read his papers, he must have published in 2000, 2001 by Dr. A. K. Gupta, Ashok Gupta and myself. There are, there is a paper in Canadian Geotechnical Journal and International Journal of Physical Modeling in Geomechanics, IJPMG, fine. So, the first thing is Reynolds number has to be equilibrated in your model and prototype. The second thing which is more difficult is the Peckle number. So, Peckle number I am sure you can realize that is related to D and what is D? Diffusion coefficient. So, Peckle number basically talks about the diffusive contaminant transport. I was guiding until last one and a half year back Dr. Jeevan Joseph, now he is in NIT Trichy and we started working on we, we came out of the fluid phase in terms of uh, water and we started talking about the gaseous flay, uh, gaseous phase flow in porous media. So, his thesis deals with gaseous phase flow, fine. 
So, everything in the gaseous form we are talking about different gases, how do they migrate through the porous system. So, I talk about the gas conductivity, not hydraulic conductivity. So, yeah, now things become more complicated because gases have their own dynamics, gases have their own molecular size, gases have their own softivity, gases have their own. Suppose if I pressurize them too much, what is going to happen? Liquefication point and flash point also. Now, imagine what a big matrix you can create. And if you are trying to solve these problems, these are the real life problems. So, some time back we were talking about this under, underground fire in mines. Are you getting some hint? How do you model this? Methane gas migrating through the porous system, catching fire. How easily it can diffuse into the entire mine and the entire coal might get burnt, which Coal India wants to stop because they want to preserve their resources. So, create thermal barriers in the mines so that mines remain insulated and they will never catch fire. Are you getting this point? Do this model. Now, let me show you how this whole thing was done in the laboratory. Uh, what can be done is you can correlate the Reynolds number with the Peckler number. If you have two discrepancies, I can correlate the two discrepancies to nullify the whole effect. This is a philosophy again. So, I may write that the Peckler number is proportional to do you recognize this term? Rho into d by what is rho by mu? Where do you use it? Very good. No, 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 no. Rho by mu, where, the, where, where, does, where does this appear? Intrinsic permeability. Capital K equal to small k multiplied by rho by mu. Clear? So, look at this term. Rho by mu is something of the order of matrix of the material. What is matrix? Pore structure. Capital K is intrinsic permeability which is dependent upon the matrix of the geomaterial. It has nothing to do with the fluid. So, if you look at the equation capital K is equal to small k multiplied by rho by mu. So, fluid phase is getting superimposed on the matrix of the porous system. Imagine this is a philosophy you know it is not an equation. You mugged it up like equation. It has nothing to do with the mathematical equation, it is only philosophy. So, when I say A and B are related to each other, two sets, what do I do? I say A subset of B, clear? Or A getting mapped on B. In your Boolean algebra, you must have studied all these things. So, what we are doing here is K is a constant term, capital K, intrinsic permeability. Now, this is porous media and what is flowing through it, a small k multiplied by rho by mu, clear? So, that term is coming over here. What is D term? Diffusion coefficient of the chemical species, fine. So, this term is a manipulation which we have created and then we say that if this is taken care of, Reynolds number can be equated to Peckley number, fine. I am just citing this example for you to train your mind in such a manner that you can create your own equations tomorrow. Some of you are laughing about an half, hour, half an hour back when I said that this could be somebody's equation. Please do not do so anymore because it is a very serious thing and you can do it. So, like this equation becomes your equation. You are proposing it. It is your philosophy. What is the application of this philosophy? I will show you. This is the philosophy. What I have done here? I have plotted <coughs> Reynolds number and Peckler number with the, to each other because there was a big question create a sort of a filter where only one mechanism will occur, not the second one. You got the point? Some industry approached and they said our requirement is only this type of contaminant transport should occur from this media. Fine. So, what, what is the significance of this type of a data? Look at this. If I say Reynolds number less than 
and Peclet number less than 0.4 is diffusive contaminant transport. Peclet number less than 0.4, Reynolds number more than 0.4 is advective diffusive. What is advection when both the numbers are greater than 0 0.4, 0 0.4, clear? And then map on this plane your results. So you will find that these samples of the filter media which you created are showing pure advection. These are showing pure dispersion and it was very difficult for us to make synthetic materials which will show you purely diffusion. Only nature can do this. This is how nature protects you. Even if you are sitting in the coastal area, nature avoids salt water getting intruded into the fresh water supply as much as it can. Look at this. Advection is ruled out in clays because the hydraulic conductivities are not going to be more. Diffusive contaminant transport also gets stopped provided there is a special category of the porous space which has been created. So this you can create synthetically in a laboratory or in an industry or nature does this. So here what we are doing, we are trying to imitate nature so that we may create things and we can install them wherever nature has not done this type of a wonderful thing. That is what the engineering practice is all about.